Hello and welcome back to the C-Cent journey with me, Ryan. And in this part, part four of Network Address Translation, we're going to look at IP pools. This will be the last part of NAT before we move on to another topic. For those who don't know, you can contact me here on YouTube, on LinkedIn or Twitter. So moving on to the last part of NAT, which is a Network Address Translation Pool. Now, previously, we've done one-to-one -one translation, a static translation, and a one-to-many, which is PAT, port address translation. Well, in this video, we're going to use a pool. And a good example of why you might want to use a NAT pool, if we have PAT, port address translation, but we want more than one public IP address, then we need to NAT into a pool rather than against an interface. And the reason for that is because NAT in itself, because it uses the source and port, uh, source ports and destination ports and IP combination to keep each session unique, there are only so many simultaneous sessions that can be created. So in order to combat this, we need to create a pool and have a bunch of public pool, uh, public IPs available to us, and therefore we can increase the amount of unique translations inside a NAT session table. So we're going to continue with the same configuration we've done previously, where we set the inside and outside, and we set an access control list to match the private IP range that we want to translate. But this then has a translation against a pool, which includes our public IP space. So you can see on the diagram in front of us, I've changed the public IP range from a slash 30 to a slash 29 so we can start to understand and configure the pool to actually NAT against. So let's get started by first doing the basic verification and then doing the inside and outside statements on the interfaces. So we're going to log on to the main router. Make sure our interfaces are in the up up state and that we can ping both a PC and the router out on the public domain. So we can ping the public domain. And we should be able to ping a PC. <clears throat> so we can ping a PC and the public domain. Brilliant. So now we can start our network address translation. So first of all, we go into the interface gig00, and this is the inside because it's the private. And then we go into the outside, which is the public, and we give it those commands. And again, all those commands are doing is saying when you receive traffic on these interfaces, make sure you push it to the NAT process if it's relevant. And the way we make it relevant is matching the source IP address of the private traffic. And we match it against an access control list. So here we've created an access control list. It's a standard ACL, which we'll get into in more detail later. The ACL's name is number 10. So an access control list is a method of matching the traffic that we want to put into the NAT process. And the 192.168.00 and 000.255, essentially the zeros mean match and the 255 means don't match. So here we're saying you need to make sure that the 192, the 1680 matches, but anything in the last octet can be any number. So once the ACL is created, the next step is to create the pool for the public translation. And we do that by using the IP NAT pool command. We need to give the pool a name. Let's give it the name outside. And at the end of the pool, unlike DHCP, which will drop you into a subcommand, the IPNAT pool 
actually ask you for the start IP range and the end IP range. So here we've got the 172.16.00.29. We know that's eight IPs, six usable. But from that six usable, we've taken dot one and dot two as our actual interface IPs. So what we would like to use is three, four, and five as the public IPs to NAT against. So what we're going to do here is pop in the next available IP. And then if we question mark that, it'll ask for the end IP. So we've got the pool starting at 172.16.03, going up to 172.16.05, which of course sits inside this slash 29. It's then asking us for a net mask. And we can let that know that we have a slash 29 available. So now we've created that pool. So from that pool, we can now do the final bit of the translation, which is the actual statement tying together the access list and the pool. And again, we do that global, and it's the same command as we've seen before. IP NAT, and we're gonna go from an inside translation. The inside translation is from a source list called an ACL 10, which is that standard ACL we created. Now, previously, we've done it to an interface. Now we're going to do it to a pool. The pool is actually called outside. I think that was the name I gave it. And not only do we want to have a pool, but we also want to overload against that pool. So in total, we now have the outside and the inside on the relevant interfaces. We have a pool set up called outside. And inside that pool, we have 172.16.03 all the way up to 172.16.05. So obviously, dot four is included there. We told it it's part of a net mask that we've been supplied. But because one and two is not part of this range, no NAT translations will go against the actual interface. We can also see an access list, a standard ACL of 10 was created that matches the private IP range. And then it was linked together using the IP NAT inside the source. The source list was 10. We're going to a pool. The pool is called outside and we're overloading against that pool. So that is the configuration required for network address translation using a pool. The key thing to remember is the pools are where the public IP sit and the access list is where the matching of the private IP range live. We do the show IP NAT translations. We have no translations, but if we go to one of the PCs and start generating traffic, let's say we ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. It took a while to resolve there. And if we could ping 9.9.9.9. .9 and then let's also go to the other PC and do the same again. So it's going to take a while to translate because it's the first time ARP has to go through. Like so. And then we go back to the router you can see the translations have taken effect. Now, a few things to notice. First of all, only the first IP, 172.16.03, is being used, and it will continue to be the only first IP until eventually it hashes to use a different IP in the pool. It, depending on the iOS, the version, it will either balance across them or it would use one until it's completely full and then use the other. Since this is a simulation, I doubt the behavior will be anything like the real world. But for now, at least what we can see is it is using the pool. It's using the first available IP inside that pool. And we can see that that IP is being used continuously against different uh, source ports and destination ports, which is where the overload comes into play. Now, that is the configuration required for network address translation using a pool for a range of public IP space.
So that's all we've got time for in this video, and it was just a quick video to finish off the NAT. So to review what we've done, we first of all looked at IP NAT inside and outside. Again, all we're doing there is making sure we put the right command on the right interface. IP NAT inside is inside our network, our private network. IP NAT outside is our public network. We then looked at the IP pool command. We said a pool is where you can pop multiple public IP addresses and then you can NAT inside that pool. And you can use those IPs to allow you in order to have multiple sessions. Because again, if we have a single IP address, we only can have so many unique sessions. We said an access control list is used to match the private IP range. And we created an access control list and the pool is for the public IP range. And at the end, we done the show IP NAT translations so we could see the translations using the IPs inside the pool. And again, when we done it, we only seen the first IP inside that pool being used, but that could change depending on the actual version of the Cisco and the way you configure NAT. So that's all we've got time for in this video. I hope it's been informative. I'd like to thank you for viewing. And if it has been, please do like and subscribe.